through everything just like I told you, old man. And you'll live to make some more of these bone boxes. <laughs> Graber, Joe Maxwell, Jesse Barton. You've been found guilty of murder in the first degree by the people of the territory of Arizona and on this 13th day of January in the year of our Lord, 1891. I'm hereby ordered by this warrant to have you hanged until death. You've want to make a statement. You've always want to make a statement. Hurry it up, fat boy. Have a date in hell for dinner. Shut up. Why don't you go?
sit in here for 18 years and rot like you did. No pen can hold Luke Santee's brother. You'll see. It's all done. Swing the wagon over to the gallows. I want to fill these things up. They're already filled! Get out of here, they'll get you.
Jones a rehabilitated man. Well, that's a credit to you and your institution, Warden. Oh, no. It's a credit to Kane. And that's why the court saw fit to release him. Kane will never pick up a gun again. The hell he won't. He'll have to. <laughs> Kane spent half his life right there in the cell where a lot about is standing. Kane was a tough kid when he came here in 73. Now he's a mellowed man with dreams of making an honest life for himself. Well, do you have any idea where he might have gone? Why don't you try Las Rinas? It's the nearest town. Mister? I'm just looking, son. Never seen you around here before. You just passing through? Uh, I don't know. Are you a cowboy? No. A miner? No. It's Ruffalo! folks. He's a shooting shark. And see the world-famous collection of macabre curios inside. The little lump of lead that was removed from Jesse James's back. And the number noose that nicked Nick Norris's nasty nape. It's the biggest little show in the territory. And no less a person than the great Mr. Twain himself said it's the best. <laughs> All right, step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's your change there. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Go right in. There's plenty of room for everybody. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best shows you've ever seen in your life. All right, step right up there. There you go, two of you. Enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. Don't miss the shooting kid. Don't miss the death display. It's your last chance to see the complete show. Thought you'd see that again, did you, Kane? No, I. I never did. I won it in a poker game. I heard you were getting out, and well, I hoped that our paths might cross. I figured you might be looking for a job. Well, I am, Mr. But not Mr. But, Mr. Ruffalo, Dan Ruffalo. Listen, Kane. I have a proposition for you. Your proposition involves this. I ain't interested. 
Oh, now, don't be so hasty, man. <laughs> I think you might like what I have to say. Sit down. Have a little drink? No. I know how tough it is for guys like you to find a job. It's a shame folks feel the way they do about people who've served a little time, but, well, it's a fact. And I might help you. What do you mean? Well, I've got a pretty good little business drummed up in this here territory. You can hear that. <laughs> Billy and me, we make pretty good money. And the work ain't hard. And, well, I kind of figured you might have a hankering to... Uh, Join up with it. What do you need me for? Well, you know, I kind of figured that folks might enjoy seeing him kill it. There, you see? <laughs> I almost said Killer Kane. Well, damn it all, I did say it. Killer Kane. <laughs> you know, I think people might really have something to talk about if they could... Well, if they could see you... Using this notched coat of yours. Yeah, I see what you mean, but uh, no thanks. I know you mean well, but I just ain't interested. There's good money in it. I just don't want to be around guns, mister. I think you can understand why. Yeah. Well, what do you figure on doing then? Oh, I don't know. I'll find work. Kane, listen to me. The West is uh, a lot different than it was back in 73 when you were part of it. A whole lot different. With the railroad and the telegraph, they changed everything, or almost everything. The only fact that you can be sure of is that you're Kane, a man to be feared. Certainly not trusted. No, it's going to be real rough for you to find a job. It is for all ex-cons. Well, uh, maybe you've noticed that men don't wear guns anymore unless they're on the road. You know, things have settled down out here. And that makes for a lot of uh, Easterners coming out west, and there ain't enough jobs for them, let alone you. I hope you're wrong, mister. I ain't. They didn't like me, they loved me. Billy, this here is Killer Kane. <laughs> this is, this is the man right here. The genuine article. Thanks for the drink, for a while. Guess I better get going, find some work. Sorry we couldn't make a deal. I'm sure glad we met you. All right, men, form a group. Right around here. I need four men only, big and strong. You there. You. You. You there with no hat on. I'm sorry, Kane. It's, it's come to policy. Let's go, men. Hey, mister. I see you're looking for work. I sure am. See that wagon? Yeah. Two bucks if you drive to Cragson Mine. Uh, put the stuff inside. I'll give you another two bucks when you get back. Yeah. Hey, you know where it's at? Oh, you just point me in the right direction.
No. I want to be able to do this again. You're going to have it a lot rougher out than you did in. Hello? Anybody here? I just needed a little water. I, I didn't mean any harm. I hollered, but nobody answered. I, uh, I guess I don't look too good. I had a little accident. some rags in back there, too. My name's Kane. Kane? Just Kane. Justin Kane. No, ma'am. Just, uh, only Kane. What happened to you? Well, I guess you could say I got fired. You going back to, uh, Las Rinas? Drywood. I came out here this morning. We're going back as soon as I finish my painting. They say this town was abandoned when the stage line stopped making its run. Guess you know all about that. That does it for today. Well, that sure is good. Thank you. I, I was wondering, miss, if I could ride in with you to Drywood. We'll make a deal. You help me get my supplies on the buckboard, I'll get you into dry wood. Yes, ma'am. By the way, my name is Monica Alton. Things have changed around here, haven't they? Yes, ma'am, they sure have. That's why I'm out here. I'm doing a series. Not just sketches, but paintings as well. I hope to capture pictorially what Bret Hart and Mark Twain were able to put into words. Local color, if you know what I mean. No, ma'am, I can't say as I do. <laughs> There's 
no reason why you should. Well, you got local color. You belong out here. You have a very interesting face. I'd like to paint it sometime. Who are you? Well, I told you my name's Kane. I mean, what do you do? Well, uh... I didn't mean to pry. It's really none of my business. I don't blame you for wondering. Uh, uh, why don't we get moving and we can talk about it on the way to dinner? Is that an invitation? Oh, yes, ma'am. I've got two. Um, What's the matter? Well, I had two dollars. I guess I not only got fired, I, I got robbed. I went to Vassar. That's a school back east for women. I detested it. So, of course, I didn't do very well in my studies. I flunked out. But I didn't care anyway, because all I wanted to do was to come out west and paint. My father thought I was running away from failure. He tried to encourage me by saying that it wasn't what happened in the past that mattered, it was the future. You're trying to encourage me by telling me that I should forget my past. Well, I'd like to, but seems like most people remember too hard. Why do you help them? I don't understand. Why did you tell me your name? Why didn't you say it was Crane or something else? It isn't what people think you are that matters. It's what you are. Would you promise an intuitive woman something? I'll make a deal with you. If you say yes, I'll treat you to that dinner. You sure like to make deals. Well? Well, it sounds mighty tempting, but, uh... You can pay me back later. It's a deal. All right, it's a deal. Why don't you get out of here? Why hang around small towns where people will remember? Go east or north to a, a city like Prescott. That's Killer Kane. I know. I heard he was here in Drywood a couple months back. Mm -hmm. This winter. Do you uh, happen to know where he went? No. It's getting dark in here. I never saw Kane. I bought that sketch off of Joe Kirby over at the boarding house. Some girl left it behind when she decided to move on. Jesse James is back. 
about using that gun in here, son. Forget it. Kane? What are you talking about, kid? That man's name is Justin. Oh, I don't know about that. That's that's Kane. That is Mr. Kane. Killer Kane. Oh, this, hey, I, I was just playing. I'm just messing around, you know. I sure wouldn't mess with you, would I? I sure wouldn't mess with Killer Kane, would you? Is it Justin? I witnessed you at work tonight. I told you it would be tough finding a job. Well, like you said, you witnessed me at work. I got a job. Yeah. But how long did it take? You know, I've been in a lot of those, um, those towns where you've been in the past few months tonight. Well, I know how hard it's been for you. I ain't complaining. No. No, you didn't complain when you were slopping pigs in Bisbee or cleaning spittoons in Tucson. Oh, let's face it, man. You weren't even able to hold those jobs, and you won't be able to hold this one either. I told you once before, I ain't interested in your proposition. All right. I just wanted to let you know the offer still stands, if and when. Billy and me will be pulling out of here in the morning for Red Rock. In case you change your mind. You know, I was so cocksure that I could get Kane to join up with us. <laughs> I thought he'd be tired of those 
chicken feed jobs by now. Oh, listen, we are doing all right, Ruth. Good as folks say he was. How much better could he be than me? Kane? Oh. Oh, if only you hadn't lied to him in the first place. Why didn't you just tell him who you were? You know, he probably wouldn't have cared if you had leveled with him right from the beginning. And why did you say your name was Justin? It's a long story, Sherry. Uh... <laughs> Goodbye and thanks again. For what? For trying. Goodbye. Well, it looks like everything's in place. Yeah. Rufalo? Kane! Your offer still stand? Sure. We were just about to pull out. Billy, lock up that wagon. You come with me, Kane. All right, Billy, let's get rolling. I gotta stop over at my place and get my gear. Touch another gun. That gun's gonna earn you a lot of money, Kane. Good money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> sure will. I bet you're pretty, uh, pretty good with that, huh? Ah, what I love are those 12 notches. Those were the good old days. Now, how would you know? I've heard. Yeah, I've heard how every man would wear a gun, and if he wanted to have it out with a guy, why he did. Shot today, you're lucky if you can get a guy outside the fist fight. Here, load up. I'll uh, see if I can trim that branch back a little. Looks like I need some practice. I never miss. Well, Kane, <laughs> you just got yourself a free show. I know what you're doing now. You're holding back, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. I know you killed 12 men. Now, I know you must have been sharper than that. I was. How'd you do it? How'd you kill them, I mean? Different men, different ways. Different men, different ways? But you always let them draw first, right? No. Not if there was a chance I might get beat. The only code I had was to let them know I was coming. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but you never bushwhacked anyone, did you? Well, like I said, they knew I was coming, so they all had guns, and none of them got it in the back. Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> see, I thought... Now, you thought that I marched down the street, called them out, and waited for them to draw, huh? Yeah. 
No, Billy, I... I was hired to use my gun, and I did. Uh-huh. Well, I, uh... <laughs> I'd let anyone draw first. Because I can uh, outdraw anyone. <laughs> It's it's hard for me to believe that you never were as good as I am. Good at what, Billy? Hitting branches? Or killing men? There is a difference. Eighteen years ago, a man never holstered an unloaded gun. You're just playing games, kid. Let me ask you something. How old were you when you killed your first man? Sixteen. Sixteen. What was he, a sheriff or marshal or what? Soldier. Soldier? How much you get paid? I didn't get paid anything. It happened in a fist fight. Oh, well. No, I mean, what about <clears throat> when you had that first notch on your coat? What about it? I didn't get paid anything for that either. I killed a bounty hunter who was after my hide. Oh, well, the first time you got paid, how much? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars. Fifty bucks don't mean much to him, Kane. He's spoiled. He don't know what it was like out here in those days. Well, it was different. Mm-hmm. A lot different. My father was a sergeant in the 4th Cavalry, and they were always out chasing Indians. I never saw much of anything except the inside of army forts till I killed that soldier. All my life, I'd seen men die, and the ones that live brag about killing others, so life was cheap to me. And $50 was a lot of money, especially when you were on the run. And you make it sound lousy. It was. Hell, I just wish, I just, I just wish I'd been living in those days. Because the way I handle a gun, boy, I'll tell you. The way you handle a gun, you'd been a dead man. Somebody would have shot you in the back because they were afraid to face up to you. That's the way it was, and don't you think different. Kane! Miss Kane? How come, uh, no one went for your back? It's a big enough target. Well, a fella did once, but his aim was low. I got a scar on my ass to prove it. <laughs> Here, try that on for a start. Go on, man, put it on, put it on. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. <laughs> Everything's gonna be black. Black Stetson, black bandana. <laughs> Everything black but the silver. Here, black jacket. Black jacket. Black pants. Look at this. Look at that buscadero belt. Ain't that snazzy, huh? Is this what a killer is supposed to wear, ain't it, Kane? Oh, I guess so, but... I sure never wore nothing like that. Oh, look, maybe we better try some of this out, huh? We might have to make some alterations. <laughs> You're a big son of a bitch. Here's some black boots. Yeah. Killer Kane. Killer Kane. <laughs> we'll stay here for a couple of days, and, and then we'll hit Tempe and Phoenix and Higginsville and Liberty, and by the end of the month, we'll be in Valseco. Morning, Linus. In the epitaph? Well, something in here I think uh, will interest you. Says Kane's coming back to town. According to the article, Kane's been with Dan Ruffalo's shooting show for almost a month. He'll be here today or tomorrow. Ooh. How 
aquí. you to know I tried. I believe you. Oh, I'm not kidding myself. I know it's not the best life, but it's better than anything I've ever known. Then I'm happy for you. I better go finish my sketch. It was nice seeing you again. Hey, wait a minute. I owe you these. I had a feeling I'd get these back. Be seeing you. Be seeing you. shooting show starring the infamous Killer Kane. <laughs> Step right inside, ladies and gentlemen, if you dare, and let the killer show you the 12 notches on his coat and how they got there. All right, folks, step right up. Come on, folks, you got a treat inside that one. What the hell are you doing? All this shouting about the killer, the killer, the killer. Now, look, listen to me. Really? Listen, uh, listen to me. Really, calm yourself. Now, you sir, listen to me. You said that I was the star. I was the star. Billy, this is my show. Now, Bach, what I damn well please. Now, you get your butt back in there and do what I pay you to do. Go on, get it. All right, folks, I know you don't want to miss this spectacular event. Here's your train, sir. Thank you very much. And... Carson? Hey, I'm glad to see you. You come to see the killer? You know, I think you and I might work something out. What are you getting at? Well, seeing as how you and Kane have met before and right out here, I, I think folks might, uh, well, they might enjoy seeing a little uh, encore. I'll make it worth your while. All right, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Let me see the color of your money. Would you take a challenge? Three shots apiece for a dollar? Sure. Sure would have been great if I could have said I beat you. <laughs> I'm the best shot in town, Kane. You want to take me on for a dollar? Well, I guess we can't say the killer back down. There you go. That's a six on the wheel.
three out of six. Six out of six. Can't beat that. Mr. Kane, what will you have? Well, I'll try some of that rye. The next one right here, that's on me. And uh, you can uh, pour me, uh, pour me the same. At least I don't see any signs around that says it can't, do you? Thank you. It says, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you something. Oh, yeah. What do you, what do you think about Roof? He's a good man. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I thought at first, too. Yeah, I really did, but I, I don't think so now. No, I, I first met him, he was he was moving about the territory, uh, doing nothing. I mean, he was selling guns, but folks weren't buying them. Of course, then one day, he sees me, and I'm, you know, shooting bottles off the fence. You know how I shoot. Well, he gets the idea of trying to drum up a little business with me, showing off his hardware. So I says, all right, I said, I'll go with you. I'll go along with you, and one thing led to another. After a couple of months, while well, he stopped selling guns and began selling admissions to see me shoot. That seems to me he's been pretty good to you. Yeah, well, not good enough. Not good enough. Shock, he treats you a hell of a lot better than he does me. And I've known him a lot longer than you, and I am a hell of a lot better with a gun than you. See, what I don't figure is how he could bark to townsfolk that I am a shooting shark. But forget himself that I could blow him apart if I got the urge. See, people ought to realize that the same thing I do to those targets, I could, I could do to them. You're talking awful big, Billy. Draw against me. What? You heard me. Draw your gun. You see, when you're a little bit afraid, not quite sure of yourself, even the fastest gun can be beat. Things are different when the target can shoot back. You remember that. You're still playing. Yeah, well, you just stand up and try that again. Well, I couldn't do that, Billy. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when I drove in here this morning if you might still be around. Get up. No. Why don't you sit down? I'm calling you outside, Kane. Go on, Kane. Last time I stepped outside with a lawman, it cost me 18 years of my life. I can't afford any more time. You forget I'm not a lawman anymore. And I'm not a gunfighter. You wooed your life. The court settled for 18 years, Carson. 18 years don't pay for all them murders. So maybe you paid for one, but you've got a dozen notches in your coat. I'm a free man, Carson. I don't want any trouble from you or any other man. I would have paid you for that performance this afternoon, Carson. You just didn't have what it takes 20 years ago. 
20 years ago, Kane was young and fast, like the kid here. But now he's older and slower, like I was when he called me. When he called you? <laughs> he didn't call you, Carson. And you didn't go out willingly. You were forced into that shootout. Forced? I was the marshal. I heard it. The people of this town forced you. You're a liar, Ruffalo. Oh? <laughs> Somebody stop me if I'm wrong. Now, there's no me. No there's... one forced me. The thought that Kane was here in Val Seco back in 71 sent a chill through this town. I knew he was here to kill. Yes, but nobody knew who. I was the marshal. And so they shoved you out of that door to stop Kane before they could find out. I did my duty. And he winged you. Because of that, your marshalling days were over. No one forced me! You know that Cain could have killed you that day. Lucky for you that he just went for your shoulder. Now, you listen to me, man. Forget about that revenge, yeah? I'll buy you a drink. But I'll buy everybody a drink. Oh, say, Ruth, who did he come gunning for? Oh, some cattleman. Uh, yeah, but did he get him? Does an outhouse stink? He sure ain't the same man, I'll tell you. I was kind of hoping to see he and that old buzzard get into something. Oh, that'd have been great. Either way, we would have lost Kane. You feel like a big man, huh? Traveling around the territory, showing everybody your 12 notches. I'm not proud of what I was. Huh? Why else you doing it? Because it's the only tool I know. I'm not hurting anybody, and I'm earning an honest living for myself. Ain't no way for you to be honest, Kane. No way at all. I haven't got a gun. Or a mind to draw against you. Kane? Here you go. Well, now. That solves half your problems, don't it? That's right. Go ahead and shoot him. Stick it in your belt, that'll do. Go ahead and stick it in there and just blow his head off. Go ahead. Well, this time I'm forcing you. Go ahead, blow it. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, he damn you. He, pick meant up that gun. he means it. I tell you, I think he means it. Almost blew my toe off. Now pick up the gun. Just go ahead and blow it. Stay out of this, Billy. <laughs> well. Well, if he uh <clears throat> if he won't pick up the gun, I'll just shoot him. Just go ahead and shoot him. Pick it up, you hear me? What? Now, I tell you, I, if I were you, if you look at his eyes, now, I would just take hold of this little thing right here and blow his head off. Oh. Listen. If I were you, I would just right now blow one bullet right into him, right here, right here. Just blow his head off. Now, you want to, don't you? Don't you want to? Shut up, you... He's getting away. Hey, you kill him now. Now, damn it, you go shoot him and I'm back! Why did you let him get away? Why don't you just tell me that? But I, you know, no, I know. I, I know. I know you just, uh, you just waiting for him to turn around so you can shoot him in the back, weren't you? <laughs> See? You don't know that. I know that's the way they do. <laughs> they, they wait. And then, uh, they turn around and they shoot them in the back. That's what they do. And... My God. That's, I know, I know that's what you're waiting for. <laughs> oh, you, if you, if you would have just, just, just got this gun. And, uh... Damn, as crazy as you are. <laughs> 
you, you just see him, you know, you just pick it up and go, pow! Kane? It is Kane. Living around here? I have my own place now. Still painting. Still painting. You still look hungry and beat, just like the first time I saw you. What happened with the shooting show? Oh, I left. You sure you weren't fired again? I need help unloading my buckboard. It's filled with a month's supply of shopping. Your services for all you can eat? Is it a deal? It's a deal. Load the stuff, I'll get supper ready. I haven't eaten that good in a long time. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. is so difficult to draw. It's so complicated. Like my life. And yours. Why mine? Well, it seems to me that this is a hard life for a lady like you. Must be a reason you live like this. Like what? Alone. The only reason is because I like it this way. Heaven knows I don't have to. Don't you miss those big cities back east? No. I was born out here. My father came out here in 49, the first gold rush. It took him 10 years. He finally struck it rich. So did my father. Came looking for gold, I mean. What happened? The only gold he got was three chevrons on his sleeve. I mean, what happened to you? Me? I was raised around army forts. The only time I saw my father was in between details, and usually he was just sobering up when it was time to leave again. And then one day he didn't come back. The Major said he died, but uh, I think he deserted. What about your mother? I never saw her that I remember. How different. My father sold his mine interests, packed up my mother and me, and took us back east, where we lived in complete comfort.
imagine what it would have been like if your father had struck it rich in Manhattan? I can't. Well, I... I guess I better be going. Thanks again. You're welcome anytime, Kane. Going. Morning. Hold that end up, will you? I thought you left last night. Well, I started to, but you filled me up so good that uh, I didn't much feel like making the ride back to Las Arenas. You let them drag, raise it higher. You know, this place could be fixed up. The land around here could support stock. <laughs> I was thinking last night, or maybe I was dreaming, but I know I could do something with this place. That would mean a lot to you, wouldn't it, Kane? I'd pay you rent as soon as I could. That wouldn't be good business on my part. You'd have to pay me first. Well, you know I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Would you please hold still? I'm sorry, Kane, but it just isn't right. Damn it, Monica, I'm not posing for anymore. There's work to be done. You don't pose, you can clear out. For heaven's sake, of course. No, this is fun. Mr. Ruffalo. Mr. Ruffalo. Mr. Ruffalo. Yeah? I'm looking for Kane. So am I. He up and left me a couple of months back. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? Who's asking? An attorney, huh? <laughs> Here's like I told you, I'm looking for him, too. Oh, I think you've made a little mistake here. 
there. Clay Allison died under the wheels of a wagon. He was drunk. You don't say. Hey, you're an attorney who's got himself hung recently. Anything from town? No. Is that where you're going? I gotta pick up some nails and a flint. Say those flowers are looking great. Everything around here does. When will you be back? I'll be back in time for dinner. But it's fertile land. With a small amount of livestock, I know I could make it a good ranch in no time. I'm sure you could, but we can't loan you the money. Because I'm king. To be frank, you'd be a poor risk. But that's not the main reason. We ask collateral of everyone. If Miss Alton would put up a deed on the property, we'd be glad to make the loan for livestock. No, sir. She's got nothing to do with this. It's her land. But it's me that's going to make something out of it. Tell me something, Kane. What have you done since you got released? Possibly I can find some related work for you. Well, I've had a lot of odd jobs, but only two things that lasted for any length of time. I was a bouncer, and I did some shooting on a show. With Rufalo, of course. You know Rufalo? Loaned him the money to buy that circus wagon of his. Would you happen to know where he is now? As a matter of fact, I ran into him last week in Prescott. <laughs> with us starting tomorrow. Oh, he is, is he? Yeah. Say, listen, uh, what do you have to say? Huh? I mean, did he, did he go into, uh, any reasons why he left? No. No, I didn't ask. All that matters is that he's back. And we're gonna start taking in that big money again. Where's the big box we put the spent shells in? It's behind the barrel. Kane, what'd you come back for? The money. Wait. Did you, uh... Say anything to Rufalo about what happened? 
No, I didn't. And I don't intend to. You know, I want to tell you something. I can't see how both you and me can uh, be in the show. I was hoping old man Carson would fix things once and for all, but he didn't, so I guess I'll have to call you myself. Now, go get your gun. What's the matter, old man? I'm calling you. Go get your gun. It's back there on the wagon. Now, go get it. Go on, old man. Go get your gun. Put that thing away, Billy. Mm, well, okay. I will put it away. I will put it away. It is put away. Because I'm just playing. And you aren't afraid of a kid who's just playing, are you? You know, you're right. It doesn't have to be right now. But it's gonna be. Killer. Killer Kane. <laughs> What'd you do, shoot them all in the back? <laughs> You're breaking my hand! You're breaking my hand! That's right, boy. I could break your hand right now. And then where would you be, huh? Don't you ever try me again. I've had it with you. I'll quit this show when I'm damn good and ready. And the next time you talk to me, you say Mr. Kane, understand? back, I went into Las Renas and asked around. Bill Grayley at the bank said he thought you might be here. You don't have to do this, you know. It's the only way I know to earn money. I'll stake you. No. I couldn't do that. One wouldn't know it, looking at you in that ghetto. You're a very proud man. I love you. You know that. And I love you, too. But please try to understand why I have to do this. It's not the best way for a man to make a living, but it's honest. I just want to make enough money to buy some livestock, and then we'll be married. Whoever would have thought back in Boston? I'd be saying yes in a cheap hotel room in Arizona to a tall gunslinger in black. Listen, that's a southbound. I'll make you a deal. You catch it. Go back to Las Arenas, and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. It's a deal. Keep your hands off of that. That's Kane's share. That's Kane's share. Uh, yeah. And which one is mine? Don't tell me. The little one is mine. Huh? Yes, that's yours. Big one is yours. That's right. This is my show, Billy. And I pay a man exactly what he's worth, no more, no less. Well, that may be your show, but I am the star and you know it. You was, Billy. You was until Kane come along. Twice as many people are paying to see him. He's earned his share. He's earned his share, huh? 
Well, I want to tell you something. You know why he came back? He's in here for just one big one. Then you know what that big scarred ass son of a bitch is going to do? He's going to take a walk! Now, he ain't going to walk away from all that money, Billy. <laughs> the only one who's going to walk is going to be you. If you don't like the way I'm running things. Hell, I can find me half a dozen sharp shooting youngsters. <laughs> But I'm never going to be able to find me another cane. Yeah, you know there's no one better than me. Maybe not, Billy. Maybe not, but you ain't a killer. How many times do I got to tell you, kid? People want to see a killer. They pay to see Kane because he's a killer. Now you, you ain't nothing. Just a little piss ant. <clears throat> So that's what I gotta be, huh? A killer. All right, Ruth, I'll be a killer. I gotta be a B1. I come for my money. yours yeah it sure is that's a lot of money for a kid like you I could sure use it <laughs> you know I don't think that uh, you know who I am nope Billy Valen <laughs> I'm little boy blue. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I really do. I really like that. You're a very funny man. Now, Mr. Funny Man, have you heard of uh, Dan Ruffalo's shooting show? I just happen to be the star. Mm-hmm. 
That's right, I'm the star. Now you say that you can uh, use that, huh? Is that right? There it is. Now, if you think that you can take it, why? Take it. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything that fast? <laughs> Didn't anyone ever tell you, boy? Never holster an empty gun. Shoot me, are you? You bet your ass I'm gonna. Get in the mine, huh?
Everything around here looks real nice. Your husband's done a great job. Thank you, Mr. Grayley. We're very happy. I'm sure you are. You know, folks up north sort of consider him as a hero for bringing in Luke Santee like he did. It's ironic, isn't it? Well, looks like you have company. I'll be going. Thank you for dropping by. Bye now. Bye. husband around, ma'am? Well, yes, he's in back. Here he comes now. Hi there. What can I do for you? Well, it's what I can do for you. I've been looking for you for quite some time. Because 20 years ago, Cain killed my father. He served 18 years in prison. No, that was the price of one life. Cain took 12. Oh, no! Spark out in the dark, men of fire lose their spark, they leave us. Violence gallops on a horse, politicians say, of course, it frees us. Then a man with a dream climbed the highest mountain, disappeared into the sunlight, returned unto his mouth. 